Hello viewers, welcome to the Civil Engineering Online Materials Lab. And in this session, we are going to go through the sand replacement method as a way of determining the fuel density. So this test method covers the measurement of the in-situ dry density of the soil that has been compacted with addition of water. Field density measurement of soil compaction can be done in various ways and this include the sand cone method, the rubber balloon method and the nuclear gauge method for shallow depth. However, in this particular session, sand cone method is adopted to measure the density and water content of compacted soils placed during the construction of earth embankment, road fields and structural backfields. It is often used as a basis of acceptance for soils compacted to a specified density or a percentage of a maximum dry density by standard test method. Field density is the actual density of the infilled soils that have been compacted with the addition of water and is also called in situ density. So by conducting this test, it is possible to measure the field density of the soil. So, but the moisture content is likely to vary from time to time and hence field density will also vary because we have the wet seasons and the dry seasons. So the moisture contents will be varied. So it is required to report the test results in terms of dry density. So as we have earlier said that there are basically three methods of measuring the dry density of soils in place. And these are the sand cone method, the rubber balloon method, or the nuclear gauge method. However, the first method is adopted for this tutorial, which is also called the sand replacement method. In this method, a small cylindrical pit is excavated and the weight of the soil excavated from the pit is measured. Sand whose density is known, which is always called the calibrated sand or the Ottawa sand, is filled into the pit. So by measuring the weight of the sand required to fill the pit and knowing its density, the volume of the pit is calculated. So knowing the weight of soil excavated from the pit and the volume of the pit, the density of soil is also calculated. So there are some few equipments that we need in order to carry out this test successfully. So we need calibrated sand of known density. We need a metal square plate. We need a jar connected to a cone of known volume. We need spoons. We need a balance sensitive to accuracy of 0.01 gram. We need brushes and we need polythene bags. So let's look at the procedure that we usually follow in carrying out this test. First of all, weigh the sand and fill it in a jar. So we usually weigh about 7 kg of sand and fill it in the jar. Then put the metal plate above the soil in the field and take a sample of soil by making a pit with a depth of 10 to 15 centimeters. Then put the sample you've extracted from the pit in a polythene bag. So uh, once you get back to the lab, you may pick a small sample for obtaining moisture content. So invert the jar with its cone full of sand in the hole and open the valve to allow the sand to flow until it stops flowing, then close the valve. Thus, the sand is distributed in three parts. So some of the sand will be in the hole, the cone, and in the jar. So let's go through the significance of this test. It is a quality control test where compaction is required. 
In the cases like embankments and pavement construction, the dry density of the compacted soil or pavement material is a common measure of the amount of the compaction achieved during the construction. Knowing the fuel density and the moisture content, the dry density is calculated. So therefore, the fuel density test is of importance as a fuel control test for the compaction of soil or any pavement layer. The in-situ density of natural soil is needed for the determination of bearing capacity of soils, for the basis of stability analysis of the slopes, for determination of the pressures on the underlying strata, for the calculation of settlement and the design of underground structures. So the purpose is to measure the dry density of soil in the field which has been compacted and added to its optimum moisture content. Thus, it can be compared with the specifications when considering terms such as relative compaction or the degree of compaction that has been achieved. So let's look at the data analysis. Where the sand retained in the jar, let's call it M2, then calculate the mass of soil in the cone, say M3, so M3 can be obtained by uh, multiplying the density of the calibrated sun by the volume of the cone. In that way we can get the mass of soil in the cone. Calculate the mass of soil in the hole. So let's call it MH which is obtained by getting M1 the mass of the total sand in the jar minus the mass of soil in the cone and mass of the soil that remained in the jar. After pouring. So from there, calculate the volume of the hole. So volume of the hole is given by the mass of the hole over the density of sand. So with the volume of the hole, we can calculate the field density. So field density is obtained by the mass of the soil obtained from the pit that we excavated over the volume of the hole. So after obtaining the field density, we can also obtain the dry density if we picked a sample and tested it for moisture content, so we can obtain our dry density. So from there, you can calculate the degree of compaction basing on your MDD data that you have. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.